Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So welcome to ECE 3500 Fundamentals of Signals and the Systems, right? So just to make sure that you are entering the correct class, okay? So my name is Mingyue Ji. So I'm a assistant professor in the electrical and the computer engineering department at the University of Utah. And uh, so I'm the instructor of this class. So I have been teaching this class many times. And uh, here is my email address. And so feel free to send me emails to ask questions, right? So we'll go over all the details of myself in the course syllabus today, okay? So, uh, so today is our first lecture, okay? So, <clears throat> so basically, uh, in this lecture, in this class, normally I use handwriting notes. So I only use slides for review of the previous uh, lecture or use slides to review, you know, some part of the class, right? Normally I just use handwriting notes, but for the first class, so this is basically the introduction of the signals and the systems, right? So I will use slides you know, to give you an overview of the entire class and the entire field. And, of, and also we're gonna go over the course syllabus today, okay? And uh, so basically, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about motivations and the basic concepts of signals and the systems, right? And um, so the outline of this class is as follows. So first, so we'll talk about, so basically we're trying to answer the following questions into this lecture. The first question we're going to answer is, uh, what are the signals and systems, right? So what are they, right? Why we want to learn them, right? And after that, so we're going to go over the applications of signals and systems, right? Why they're important. So why we're gonna use it in practice, right? So what uh, systems or what applications of that okay uh, then so we're gonna go over what are we going to exactly learn in this class right because this is basically a very fundamental class right you are not going to understand everything after learning this class right but we're going to basically cover so what you're going to learn about this class to make sure that you are entering the same the, the you know the, the right class okay and uh, then we're going we're going to go over the course syllabus today so it's a pdf file that i have uploaded so we're going to uh, take a look at that right it's pretty thorough and uh, then finally uh, we're going to give you a very brief description about uh, what you want to learn after this class, right? So why this course is important and what follows this class, right? So before we're going to in the first uh, first question, so I will just give you a very brief overview of the course uh, website, right? So yeah, we're going to discuss that again in the course syllabus, okay? So. So in this class, we're basically going to use uh, two websites. So one is Canvas, and the other one is uh, is my own made uh, course website, right? They're identical, right? There's, you, you know, depends on your preference. Some students prefer to use uh, Canvas. You are more familiar with that, maybe. And But some of the students may prefer, you know, a separate course syllabus, right? So, so here is a course uh, website. Uh, so, so you can see that, so today I post uh, at the syllabus of the, the class, and then I also upload the slides of this class, right? And you can see this is basically, you know, uh, the topics that we're going to cover today, right? And, uh, you know, as the course goes by, so I will put more and more things here and you will see. Right and uh, on the canvas, so so basically you use these modules. So I don't you usually I don't use this module uh, tool directly. So what I use is that. So we have assignment uh, site right. So here, so basically 
you can see that we're going to have labs, we're going to have homeworks and exams and also quizzes, right? So I will talk about them in detail in the syllabus. And uh, also, uh, so I use pages a lot. Okay, so I'll put all the lecture slides and uh, here. And also I'll put the, the link of the lecture videos here. Um, right, so basically, uh, so I think my video is relatively large. So I think I want a better quality. So basically I will put a Dropbox link here so you can watch the video from the Dropbox link. Okay, or you can download it as well, I think. And also, as I said, right, so usually I use handwriting notes here. I will put, uh, so all the lecture notes here. Okay, of course now we don't have anything. And uh, also, so you can find all the files in the file section. So I put everything separately uh, into each folder. And if you click the folder, you can see what uh, is inside. And now only the syllabus is here. Okay, and so this is, uh, you know, from the old experience, I think it works pretty well and it's pretty well organized. And uh, if you have any suggestions for the organization of the canvas or the organization of the course website, please let me know. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, so now let's continue to talk about what are the signals and systems. Okay, so basically, uh, you can see uh, signals and systems basically describe describe you know a system like this okay so we have an input signal and we have a block inside it's called a system and then we have a output signal so the meaning of the system is basically that it's going to manipulate the input signal the other words, for example, in this case, so let's say, let's say the x, uh, the x axis is the time. So I use t to denote it. And the y axis is the strings of the signal. You can understand this like a voltage, right? And let's say if the input signal looks like this, it's more or less like a sine uh, wave, right? And then the output is something like that. You can see what the system does is to magnify the signal, right? Make the signal, make the uh, amplitude of the signal bigger, right? So the, it's doing a magnification of the input signal, right? So this is what this particular system does, okay? So that's an example uh, of, a uh, very brief example of uh, uh, signals and systems, right? So to really understand what is a signal and uh, so what you know what is a system so yeah let's discuss them separately right the first so we're going to dis say what is a signal right so this is basically the same structure of the class right so we're going to talk about what is a signal and what is a system and then the combination of them okay so so typically uh, so we, we basically think of signals as information bearing quantity, right? It means that a signal carries information. For example, it could be radio signal, right? Like the AM signal, so FM radio, right? Uh, and, uh, and it also could be a broadcast or cable TV, right? So if you watch a TV, so we need you know, some input, right? The input is a signal, okay? And also we have audio like music, MP3, for example. And also, as we said before, so the electric voltage or current in a circuit, so that could be signals as well. And, uh, you know, more generally, we can also think about the stock price as a signal and also images, right? So in general, so any physics, any physical or abstract quantity that can be measured basically can be sought as a signal. It can be very broad, right? And uh, nowadays you'll hear more and more about, you know, the data, right? Data science, right? So basically you can understand the data as sort of a signal, right? Actually, it's, you can think the data more or less like a discrete time signal that we're going to discuss later today. Okay. Okay. Very good. 
So, uh, so in this class, uh, for, we're going to talk about some specific kind of signal, right? Or uh, in the next class, so we're going to talk about the classification of signals, right? So one important, uh, you know, classification of the signal or, you know, an application of the signal is the time signal, right? Which means that the x, the x axis is time and the y axis is the strength of the signal, right? But it's over time, right? So one example could be audio signal, right? If you hear something, right? You hear FM signal, for example, or you hear uh, MP3 music, right? So that can be understood as a time signal, okay? So normally, the time signal is uh, <clears throat> so the so in, in for the time signal there are like uh, you know we can classify them as two cases so one is the continuous time signal and the other one is discrete time signal right so often we say the continuous time signal as the analog signal right I say often it doesn't mean that they are equivalent right so. So for the, but the difference is very subtle. So for the continuous time signal, usually what do we emphasize is the X axis or the time domain is continuous, right? It means that for any point here, right? As long as it's a real value, then there's some value here, right? But you're gonna see, you know, on the other hand, for discrete time signal, so the signal only has value at some discrete point here, okay? But usually for analog signal, we mean both time domain and the strength domain are continuous, right? But it may not be the case for the continuous time signal. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, so as we said, right, audio signal could be uh, a, t a continuous time signal and the AC voltage, for example, and also current, right? And here is example of you know the audio signal so, so that can be basically represented as x of t right what is x, x of t right as we said t is the time domain and x is the strength of signal or we can understand the signal is a function of time so x of t is a function of time t okay Okay, so next let's uh, talk about the discrete time signal or, you know, often we say that is a digital signal and, uh, you know, the difference between them is similar as the difference between a continuous time signal and analog signal, right? Normally for the discrete time signal, we mean that uh, the time domain, the X axis is discrete, but uh, you know, the Y axis can be anything, we don't care, right? But for digital signal, often both the time domain and also the strength domain are discrete, right? But, you know, it, I don't think there is a rigorous definition for that, but, you know, we often we just say that, okay? And uh, for digital signal, you know, we can see that maybe even more often today, right? For example, the digital image is a digital signal, right? Like this, right? And also, for example, all the data, I mean, not all the data, most of the data can be understood as, you know, the digital signal, right? For example, the daily temperature, right? I say we, we may not measure the temperature for all the time, right? We just, for example, we just may measure the temperature like uh, once an hour, right? And then, so that's a discrete time signal, okay? Uh, Okay, and also, uh, you know, for the digital image, so we're gonna say that later, but now we can see that we can represent it as a function of the space, right? So here, so the discrete time, right? So the time, you know, it doesn't, so although we call it time, but we, it doesn't mean that it has to be the time, right? Just a term, right? We, we you know, we just say, you know, if, you know, the variable there is discrete, just call that dig discrete time signal, but it doesn't mean the physical meaning of the variable, the independent variable are time, 
right? Could be space, for example, like this, right? And uh, here, obviously, x, so the value of the function or the output of this function basically means the gray uh, scale of this image, right? And m and n here means the location of each pixel, okay? Okay, very good. So, and uh, also, you know, there could be some other type of signal as well, right? And, uh, oh, so, so before looking into that, let's see. So for the continuous time signal and the discrete time signal, you know, they are not related, okay? So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the relation between them, right? So one relation could be that they can be converted to each other, right? For example, I say, I say, I say here, this is a continuous time signal, right? But in the next figure, so this could be a discrete time signal, right? And obviously, you know, we can obtain this signal from this signal by a operation called sampling, you know, that we're gonna, going to discuss in this class, okay? So it's, it's pretty obvious that, so for discrete time signal can be obtained from a continuous time signal by using sampling, right? So that is not very hard to understand. But what is you know, not extremely obvious is that there is a chance that we could recover this continuous time signal from the discrete time signal. Okay, it's kind of like magic, right? So yeah, so we're gonna cover that in this class later as well, okay? And uh, you know, for this kind of audio signal, or image signal, they are kind of regular signal, right? But there are some irregular signal, okay? Uh, or let's say we, may, we, we refer that usually like to data, right? So data are kind of signal. For example, you know, this graph signal, you know, could represent the, the social networks, right? So each point here can represent a group of people or just a person. Right, so you know this is also a kind of signal, okay, and um, and also the regular signal can be characterized into many classes of signals, right? So we're going to define that rigorously next class, but here you know we just give you a very brief overview. For example, before the audio signal we see is um, we call that this signal as a dimension, one dimension signal because you know the variable here is only t, right? It's one dimension, only one variable here. But for the image signal, right? So we have two input variable here, right? So this is a two dimension signal, okay? Right. And also as we have seen before, so we classify a signal into the continuous time signal and also the discrete time signal, right? There are many other classes that we're going to discuss in, you know, mathematically next lecture. Okay, so then let's see. So when we classify the signal, so we, you know, we can also look at a signal from other domain, right? So before we say the signal is a time signal, right? Although you know it does, it really doesn't mean that, you know, is a time, right? It could be space, right? So, but you know, we can look at signal from other domain via transformations, okay? And that is one of the most important topics in this class, right? So, in other words. So we're going to look at a signal in the frequency domain besides the time domain, okay? So the way to do that is via the so-called Fourier transform, okay? So of course now we're not going to see, you know, the details of the Fourier transform, but ideally, so in the Fourier transform, so we're gonna decompose the signal into different frequency components. For example, I say, I say the bottom line here is our signal, we call it f of t, right? And then we can decompose it into three signals. So each of them has uh, one frequency, right? For example, so we can decompose this signal into this signal, 
this signal and then this signal, right? If we add those three signals together, we're gonna get f of t, right? But each of them have has only one frequency component, which means that so each of them is only a sine wave, right? So each sine wave has only one frequency, right? So this is an intuitive explanation of you know this. Uh, so the frequency representation, right? If you want to represent the signal, right? So we only need to represent so which frequency component it has, right? So we have basically omega one, omega two, omega three, three frequency components, and also we only need to you know know the magnitude of each frequency component, and then we basically know the signal, right? So in other words, instead of knowing the time, right? It's, that instead of knowing the signal as a function of time, so we can know the signal as a function of the frequency, right? We only have three frequency points, and for each point, we have a value of 0 0.1, 0 0.7, and 0 0.2, right? So yeah, this is um, <clears throat> one example to look at signal in the frequency domain, right? In other words, so we can look at um, a even simpler signal, Right? How about this kind of signal? If we write, you know, we draw the signal in the frequency domain, so which means that, so we have uh, uh, x axis, so which is our frequency component f, and then, so the y axis basically means the magnitude of it, right? And now you may think about now. We, let's say we have only these two components, so I have one component at fc and the one component at uh, negative fc so you may you know see that it's kind of weird right why we have negative frequency component right so you're going to see that later in this in this course that we're going to explain so this is basically a mathematical uh, effect right so it does not have so the negative frequency does not have a real physical meaning okay and uh, in the so so this is a signal in the frequency domain okay so now let's think about so what do you think the signal should be in the time domain okay so as we said before so it only has one frequency point right let's ignore the negative frequency point right just negative fc right it only has one frequency point right means that it only has values for one frequency, right? So think for a second what kind of signal it could be. Right? So it could be a sine or cosine signal, right? It should be, you know, this kind of signal. It turns out that so this can be represented by a cosine signal and uh, for this, this signal it only has one frequency point of fc because this time domain signal has only one frequency which is fc right okay okay so now you may ask right so normally so in practice we always see the time domain signal right image you can think that as a time domain signal right and the audio can be think that as a time domain signal, right? You may ask why we want to look at the signal into from a different domain, right? There are multiple reasons. So here are you know for for the illustration, I just give you two reasons. So one reason is that so sometimes the frequency domain or from a different domain, so can reveals the fundamental characteristics of a signal in the system. Right, so yeah, I, I know it's not extremely clear now, but I promise you that so later in this class you understand the meaning of it, right? So this class, you know, the the, the, the first class is just to give you a, you know a motivation and introduction of what you're going to learn in this class. Okay, and the other reason is that it could so in mind so many times, so it is easier, you know, to analyze the system from the frequency domain right 
and also it's also easier to you know analyze a signal from the frequency domain right so one example is the example we have seen before right so if you want to you know if you want to draw a cosine signal right it's kind of pretty complicated in the time domain right but in the frequency domain it only has one point you know it's just one point we can represent a cosine signal right which is pretty convenient and it's very clear you know from this figure we can see the signal has only one frequency point right that's the reason you know that's one of the reasons that we may want to look at a signal from a uh, the, from the frequency domain right similar you know uh, approach can be also used to analyze a system right okay very good so <clears throat> so also so here is some example as we mentioned before right we can look at a signal from you know from other domains right and uh, so we have one dimension signal we could, which is audio signal right uh, like voice music and so on so we have we have uh, we have seen that before and uh, the other uh, example is the two dimension signal right it could be image right and of course you know for both of them we may have the time domain signal or the, sorry we may have the continuous time signal and the discrete time signal right here we can have continuous two dimension signal and uh, discrete two dimension signal okay and also we may have three dimensional signals right like videos right for video right we have three dimension so well two dimension is our space and the one dimension is a time right for any given time so we have an image right and also we could have continuous time signal right s1 s2 means the space variable and t means the time right and also the discrete time version of it okay okay so here so we just give you a very brief introduction of what are the signals right basically signal is some you know some physical medium that carries information that can be measured right okay so <clears throat> now let's talk about uh, a system right so what is a system so a typical system basically takes a signal and convert it to another signal or you know as we said before the signal can be I mean the system can be understood as the you know a manipulation of the input signal right it could be just the magnification of the input signal right so here are some examples of uh, the system right it could be a radio receiver and the audio amplifier right as we you know like this kind of system so it could be a modem right and it could be a microphone so it could be a self the cell phone cell telephone and it could be even a cellular metabolism and also it could be even national global economies right so as long as it could manipulate the input signal so that is a system right so for example it could be also let's say the input signal is x and the, the output signal could be x square and this square operation is basically a system right and uh, abstractly so we can say a system is just a set of mathematical or computational relationships between the input and the output signals right so in particular in this class so we're going to only focus on one specific system so which is called linear time invariant or lti systems right so we're going to explain the exact meaning of it later in this class okay and uh, just give you a, a, a brief <clears throat> a preview uh, for that so if we just do a magnification of the input signal so that is a lti system okay so now let's see a very simple example of a system so this kind of circuit could be just it could be a simple example of a system right so we have you know a voltage here and we have a generator here and we have a 
uh, resistance here and we have a capacitor, capacitor here, right? The input could be a voltage, right? And the output could be the voltage uh, around this capacitor, right? So here's the input, here's the output, and this simple circuit is a very simple system, okay? So yeah, here I just give you a very brief overview of what a system is, right? So basically system is something that manipulates the input signal and give you a output signal, right? Transfer signal, transfer um, one signal to another signal, okay? So that is basically a system. Okay, so now let's uh, look at into our next topic is the application of signals and the systems right so so the one of the most important application of signals and systems is a communication system right so here is example of a communication system so it's an rf and a deep space communication with uh, mars pass a pass binder okay so in this uh, in this uh, system so we can see that we have input message and there's a transmitter and uh, there's a channel here, right? The channel is basically from the ground to Mars, right? So, you know, it's a very complicated channel and we have a receiver here. And also after the receiver, so the receiver will basically, to, uh, so it will estimate the transmitted message, right? Basically it will estimate, so this message, right? in order to know what is sent, right? So this is a very high level representation of a communication system. We can see we have an input signal and we have an output signal and uh, everything between. So that is basically a system, right? Okay, good. And, uh, you know, in, in, in modern days, you know, so machine learning and big data uh, you know, attracts more and more attentions, uh, attentions, right? So basically this kind of system, we can also, can be also understood as signals and systems, right? So for example, if we want to classify a cat from dogs, right? What do we do? So we have here, we have input signal, which is a cat. And then we may use, you know, the deep neural network that I'm sure you heard about deep learning or machine learning, right? So all the machine learning algorithm here in between can be understood as a system. But here we have the freedom to design the system, right? In the previous example, you know, in the previous example, although we can design the transmitter and the receiver, but channel is something that we cannot control, right? It's somehow given, right? It's nature, but here, so it is possible that, you know, we can design the system, right? We have an input message and then we have a system, you know, to manipulate the input message. And then, so we have output message to say whether it's a cat or a dog, right? So that, you know, you know therefore you can see the machine learning system is basically also one example of the, of the signals and system, right? So, and the other application here is also, you know, from machine learning. So it could be captain generation, right? We have an image. So can we generate a captain for it, right? So after, you know, a framework, you know, to analyze, you know, what, uh, what are in this image, right? We can basically tell that, you know, possibly we can tell that in this image, so we have a group of people shopping at an outdoor market and there are many vegetables and uh, fruit stand, right? So after a machine learning system, so we may be able to tell about this, okay? And also this is happened today, right? This is what we have today, okay? And also here, so this is basically an input signal and then we have a design system like that. And here um, are the output messages, right? Of input system and output. So this is also one example of signal system, right? So yeah, all the artificial intelligence applications can be understood as somehow, you know, signals and systems, right? Therefore, we can see our course is pretty important, okay? 
Okay, so next, let's move on to so what will what we will learn in this class, right? Let's see. So basically, in this class, so we're gonna have three parts in total, right? So the first part is the language of signals and systems, right? And uh, the second part is the continuous time signals and systems analysis. And the third part is the discrete time signals and signal, uh, systems analysis, right? And, uh, and in the first part, so we're basically going to talk about what is a signal you know, rigorously, not like this class right here. We just give you a very brief motivation of what a signal system is. But uh, later on in the first part, so we're going to give you rigorous definitions of signals and the systems, you know, and you know, the combination of those, how signal passing through a system, okay? And, uh, and in the second part of the class, so we're going to focus on the continuous time signal systems, right? As we said, right, the X domain is continuous, right? And then in the third part of the class, we're going to talk about the discrete time signal systems. And uh, for both part two and part three, so we're going to focus a lot on different kinds of transformations, including continuous, uh, continuous time for a series, continuous time for a transforms and the Laplace transforms. And for the discrete time case, so we're going to talk about sampling, right? So which, a way, which is a way to convert the signal from the continuous time to discrete time. Okay, and uh, also we're going to talk about discrete time Fourier transform, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, a Z transform. And if time permits, we're going to give a very brief introduction on the discrete time, uh, on the discrete Fourier transform, right? Not discrete time Fourier transform, right? There's a tiny difference here, right? We have discrete time Fourier transform and discrete for a transform, no time, okay? So, and of course, you know, it was so many transforms and, uh, you know, it's kind of messy, but uh, we're going to explain you why we need all of them, okay? And uh, what is the motivation and reason to have many transform instead of one transform, okay? And uh, so in this class, so we're going to focus on analysis, right? Signal and the system analysis instead of design, right? So we're not going to cover how we should design system. We're gonna to touch a little bit, but not much, right? So this means that, so systems, both systems and uh, signals are given, right? We just want to analyze both of them, okay? And uh, in this class, so we're going to talk about the deterministic signals, right? Instead of the random signals, right? So yeah, we're going to discuss if you want to learn random signals, what class it should be, right? And also we're going to focus on the single input and the single output systems, right? Which means that we have only one signal input and the one signal output, okay? So in contrast, in practice, we also have multiple inputs and the multiple output system, right? For example, uh, so one famous example is a multiple antenna system, right? Let's say the transmitter may have multiple antennas and the receiver may have multiple antennas. So this is basically a multiple input and the multiple output system, right? Because we have multiple antennas, right? Or we call such system as MIMO system. Right, which is widely used practice in practice today, like in the 4G and 5G communication systems, and also used in our Wi-Fi systems. Okay, very good. Uh, okay, so one more thing. So this class, in this class, uh, so we will focus on both continuous time signal and the discrete time signal. Right. So. I know that in practice, in most of the cases, we are going to dealing with 
discrete time signal but so in this class we're going to talk about the fundamentals right so we're going to focus on both maybe you know we have a slightly more weight on the continuous time signal because you know all the results from the discrete time signal were derived from that of the continuous time signal right so we may put slightly more time on analyzing the continuous time signals and the systems right so if you know you're mainly looking for something discrete so that is not this class right you should look for a discrete time signal processing right that is uh, the number starts uh, with five so i can't recall exact what number that is but i should not be in this class right so we'll talk about both continuous time and discrete time okay so and uh, and the other thing you know before we're before going into the course syllabus so yeah let me mention one more thing here from the old experience so i noticed that so most of you have seen fourier transforms and the laplace transforms or even z transforms right uh, so it's fine uh, if you have seen them so in this class so one of the emphasis emphasis is to tell you you know how we derive them right so why and why we need them and what is the relationship between them right for example so if we have the Fourier transform right we have a tool to analyze the signal in the frequency domain right then why do we need Laplace transform right what is that used for okay so we're going to explain you those right to tell you you know the real fundamentals of the signals systems and all the transforms right so that's another emphasize um, in this class okay so now uh, let's talk about the course syllabus okay so yes okay so here uh, is the course syllabus so so i have uploaded on canvas already right so now let's go over them carefully so it's a pretty uh, complicated uh, uh, syllabus so so as i said so this is my name my name is Minger G, and here is my email address and feel free to send me emails anytime okay usually i reply email pretty quick okay and here is our course website okay and uh, so if you don't like the course website please go to canvas page right so we can you can also find all the information on canvas okay and here is my office but uh, yeah, so due to the COVID-19 so in most of the time I will not be in the office but I'll be available almost all the time via emails and uh, even zooms right so the class meeting time uh, is usually Tuesday and Thursday, right? So that's the old time that this class usually meet. Um, and of course now, you know, so this is an online class and uh, I mean, the lectures are online and I upload the videos uh, you know, before every Tuesday and Thursday, okay? You should expect you see the video every Tuesday and Thursday morning okay and uh, so in this class we we'll also have a optional interactive sessions okay so that is monday 10 30 a.m to 11 30 a.m and of course it is optional uh, and uh, the location is web 12 30 and uh, so i will send you a short survey about so whether you know you want to meet in person or we can have a zoom meeting here right and even you know sometimes i may put some you know discussion session of the homework solution i may upload the video for that if you know you you, you like that okay so i'll send you a very short survey soon to ask 
whether you want to meet in person or you know we can have a zoom meeting for that or we can use that as additional office hours or you know some homework so you know solution session but uh, by uploading videos okay and here is my zoom number right so if you know you have questions so you can we can use zoom to discuss right so uh, yeah this approach has been used in the previous semester and it's pretty successful i think it should work uh, well today uh, this time so in addition to that so i have office hours which is friday from 3 to 5 p.m so this time could be you know it's a well thought time right because we have tuesday lecture thursday lecture and then you know after watching everything you know you may ask questions on friday afternoon from 3 to 5 p.m right this is a live zoom session right so if you are not available during this session don't worry at all right so i usually have an open door policy of course you know now you cannot knock my door office door and and, and then come in right so uh, usually i'm not in the office but it's by zoom right so if you have any questions i mean any questions just send me an email okay i'll set up a zoom meeting with you as soon as possible right so normally you know i get up pretty early and sleep very very late right so we don't have to talk during you know the working time from 9 to 5 9 a.m to 5 p.m right we can talk at night or even midnight right so you know i also have tried that before right because i know some of you are working during the daytime but if you have any questions you know, any question like homework questions lecture questions lab questions so you you can ask me uh, you know any time and we can set up zoom meeting at night right it works for me okay don't be shy to ask any questions okay and uh, the credit hours for this class is four units so i have three units for the lecture and one unit for the labs right okay here is a course description so i'm not going to read those and you just you know take a look and see what we're going to learn um, about this class right it's pretty much the same as what uh, i just uh, discussed in the slides okay so yeah here are the learning objectives right the main tool we're going to use i mean it's a pretty mathematical oriented class right we have lots of homework to solve right by hands and also we have matlab labs and even matlab homeworks right so you 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 know if you're not familiar with matlab you know let's speed up a little bit and try to get familiar with matlab and here are the prerequisites for this class mainly some math classes okay so the grade distribution are as follows so we have four uh portions of this class will contribute to grades but it doesn't mean that only have four portions right we have, we have some other portions as well okay but they don't contribute to the grades distribution right so we have four labs right in total the lab will contribute 20 percent of the final grade and uh, we have one midterm exam right so due to the pandemic you know it the, the the exam is not as easy as before so before we have three midterm exams and one final but this time only have one midterm right so that will you know pa cover the part one of the class and the first half of the part two of the class right so that will contribute 25 percent to the final grade and we'll have one final exam so that will cover the second half of the class right they will not overlap okay also the final exam contribute 25 percent okay and um, and we have homeworks and uh, the homework so we'll have 11 homework in total and we'll only count 10 best out of the 11 okay of course i strongly encourage you to do all of them right because they are very important for a study and uh, so every homework has three points so in total, we have 30% of the homework. Okay, those are the grade distribution. 
and uh, course logistics. So we have a uh, we have TA of course, but uh, I you know at the time I'm recording this video, the TA are not decided now, right? Roughly they are decided, but we're waiting you know for we're waiting them to accept the TA offers, right? So once we decide the TAs, I'll post their information here, right? So if I'm not mistaken, so we should have two graders to grade your homework and uh, uh, two lab TAs to help you for your lab session, right? So I believe in this class, all the lab sessions are online, right? They should, you know, it should be via Zoom, okay? So, so I'll try my best, you know, to describe, you know, each lab session each lab before the starting of each lab session okay but uh, you know but the TA will also help to answer your questions right so the first lab will start next week week two okay oh and also uh, I forgot to mention so for the optional interactive session I'll send you a short survey to see whether you want to meet in person or zoom or uploading videos right so after that i'll 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 see what we're gonna do but uh so in the first week we're not going to have this interactive sessions right because you are probably not watch did you have not watched the, the video yet before monday okay so the next is uh is the textbook right so in this class usually we use the signal processing and the linear system this textbook by uh, lafty okay so so i will recommend you to have this book but i i'm not sure or i don't think it is necessary so i will write down everything in very detail in my lecture notes Okay, and I also will have lecture slides to help you to review the previous lecture content, right? I'm not sure whether, so I don't think, you know, it is mandatory to have this textbook, okay? And, uh, and plus, we're only going to cover a small portion of this book. And the other very good book is Signals and System by Sanjit Mira, Mitra, okay? So this is a so this is a much simpler book compared to this book. Okay, so you know, if you want, you can also buy this book as well. Okay, or you only buy this book. It's a so it's it's very well written and a much easier book compared to the first one. And of course, you know, it is not necessary. Okay, and also there are some. You know online free material that you can what you can you can read you know but please focus on uh, my lecture notes and the homeworks they are much more important okay and uh, so in my course website so every time so i will indicate which chapters which sessions that we cover in both books right so you you can see that okay so now is the grades right so in this class we have the grades from a till e right you can see that so if you are bigger than 93.3 i will guarantee you you will get an a right and uh, from 90 to 93.3 is an a minus and so on you can see the you know the grade period right so normally in this class i don't curve okay so my exam and homeworks are not very hard right so you know it depends on the year but uh, you know when you're in a good year so we have maybe one third oh sorry uh, one third and one fourth of the class could be an a and maybe another one fourth of the class is a minus it happened before right normally i don't curve right you know it is possible that i curve a little bit right but i will not you know uh, curve in a you know very large scale okay maybe curve a little bit you know depends on the result of the class but normally i don't curve much okay 
And of course, you know, the curve, if the curve happened, so it will only happen to improve your grade instead of, you know, worsen it, of course. Okay. And uh, so here, so now let's discuss the each component of this class uh, separately. Okay. First, let's see the homework, as we said. So we have 11 homework in total, but not all of them count, right? Only 10, the best 10 out of 11 count. Okay, so roughly speaking, uh, we'll have uh, homework every week. Okay, of course, you know, it cannot be exact every week, but uh, roughly speaking. And uh, in the homework, most of the problems are just mathematical problems. You're gonna solve it by hand, right? And then, so you're gonna, uh, scan it and upload it on canvas uh, to grade right so please be careful that you should combine all your files as a single pdf fi pdf file and uh, you know write you know scan it as clear as possible okay so if you have any doubt for your homework please let me or the ta know immediately right so if there's some mistakes Know, made by the TA so so we can correct them in time okay and uh, for the grading the homework has uh, at most three point each so in total we have 30 points you know towards the final grade okay and uh, so for the late policy so normally every homework roughly speaking you have a week to uh, finish your homework and uh, so the late policy is that so if for every time you are so for every day you are late so we're gonna subtract 0 0.5 multiply the number of the date that you are late for right 0.5 multiply x where x you know is the number of days that is late Okay, the only days uh, we count here is weekdays. So weekends doesn't count, right? For example, if the homework is due on Friday, but you submit it on Monday, so we're gonna only count one day late. Okay, the weekends doesn't count. Okay, and here is an example you can see, right? Let's say, so if you receive a 2.5 for a homework assignment and uh, you know you submit it two days late right and then it's basically what you're going to receive is 2.5 minus 1 so you're going to get 0.5 points okay so <clears throat> so uh, that is the late policy and uh, normally the submission time will be due on you know, on the certain date at midnight, 11.59 p.m., okay? So the second component is the quizzes. So this time we do not grade your quiz, okay? So we're gonna have more or less seven quizzes uh, in this class, but the goal of the quiz is just, in, just to give you a assessment of your knowledge, okay? So they will not be graded, so you, you have to do it yourself, you know, on your own, but I will discuss them maybe in the Monday discussion, discussion session or during the class, right? And I will also provide the answer for the quiz, but they will not be graded, right? So usually, you know, the quiz is just very quick check of your knowledge. So therefore, uh, it is usually pretty simple. Right, it's not a hard problem, it's very easy, but you know, it's a very quick check, check of your knowledge. The, the homework problems and exam problems will be harder compared to the quiz, you know, but you know, they are not totally different, but slightly harder, okay? Regarding exams, so we're gonna have two exams in total, okay? So as we said, one midterm exam and one final exam, right? And um, uh, and uh, so some, uh, you know, the exam will be, both of the exam will be take home, okay? 
So we, we are not going to do the online exam or so. So I will upload the exam uh, on Canvas and on my website and you will download them and do the test, right? And uh, so the duration of exam, I have not decided yet, right? It depends, but at least you will have a day to finish it, okay? So therefore you don't need to have a much big pressure, okay? And before, so for the exam, so for midterms, we only have one hour and 20 minutes. But this time, so you, you're gonna have at most a day to finish it. Of course, the exam could be slightly longer than before, right? But I guarantee you the time is sufficient, okay? And uh, so one thing here, so we have done this many times before. So, so we want you to prepare cheat sheet for your exam okay although you know i'm not going to say the exam is you know closed book closed internet or whatever it's an open exam you can do whatever you want because i cannot proctor it okay but so what i suggest you to do is to prepare cheat sheet so which is uh you know a a4 paper and uh, you can you can write whatever you want there double side so I encourage you to have two sheets of papers for the midterm and the two more sheets of papers for the final, okay? So this means that including the two sheets uh, of the midterm, you're gonna have four papers for your final exam, right? So this is very important. Uh, you know, as you you know, as this course goes by, you'll see there are lots of things to remember, right? Write down important things will help you to learn this class much better. So please trust me, believe me, right? Do this. So it's for your own benefit, okay? And uh, each uh, each exam, uh, each exam will be graded on a one hundred scale, okay? Uh, for makeup exams, so as you may see, I just uh, you know changed my syllabus a little bit. So before we have makeup exams, you know which you know is complicated, but this time, so you know due to the difficulty, so we don't have makeup exams, right? I mean by by saying that, I mean we don't have a regular makeup exams, right? So if you know you have something urgent, right, or you know if like you're in den you're, 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 you got injured or something like that so you got emergency in your home you for your, you, you, your family for a family then just let me know okay so we can do something about it but uh, no official no formal regular uh, makeup exams okay so next let's talk about the lab assignment so we have four labs in total in this class and uh, I have two mini labs Right, the first two labs are very short labs. The first lab is to help you to familiarize uh, my lab, and uh, and from the lab three is a you know it's a formal big lab, right? And lab four is even bigger, right? And uh, we need to write reports for all the labs, right? That is one of the training you're gonna get in this class, right? Formal lab reports, right? So lab one, lab two are just short reports and lab three and lab four are big formal reports, right? So we're gonna, going to give you the format and uh, me and TA will help you, you know, help you to, you know, to know how to write it. Uh, okay, and also as we said, right, the labs are basically my lab. You know, if you have questions, welcome to, you know, to attend the lab session. I think it's a Zoom session uh, by the TAs. But, you know, uh, you know, it's just my lab, right? So uh, I don't think you need to attend uh, every single session, okay? So just do your own lab. And if you have questions, of course, you can ask questions during the lab session. And also you can ask your question via email, both me and the lab, the TA will answer your questions. Uh, okay, and uh, so so all the labs are very well designed. So we're trying to, you know, align well 
the course material material and the labs right but they are not aligned extremely perfectly okay so we'll try our best you know to help you to learn uh, you know the most but uh, you know sometimes it could happen that you know the lab is a little bit ahead of the class but we'll try our best to avoid it right so the reason we may let it happen is to you know upload the lab early right so we want you know usually what we do is that once we finish a lab and the and the way upload next lab okay in this case you're gonna have very long time for each lab right but it doesn't mean that you have to start it by that time right if you want you can start if you don't want you can wait a little bit okay and also every lab will be graded on a 100 hand scale and and we're gonna convert it you know in to specific point that contributes to the to the final uh, grades okay and the late policy for the lab report is very similar uh, to the homework so the difference is that so every late days we're going to we're going to subtract two points okay because we, you have 100 point total right but every every single late date we're going to subtract two points Okay, and of course, again, you know, similar for the homework, if you have any emergency, please let me know. So we're gonna see what we can do, okay? Uh, okay, so so next is, uh, is a course, uh, course structure, as we said. So we have three parts of the class, right? The first part is the language of signals and systems. And the second part is continuous time signals and systems analysis. And third part is discrete time signals and uh, systems analysis. Okay. And uh, in this class tracks, you know, class uh, structure, we're going to have a lot, right? So we have quizzes and we have practice reviews and we have discussions, right? This is basically uh, the optional interactive session and also, uh, so in the lecture, so we're gonna have lecture videos, you know, like uh, what you are watching now, and we're gonna have lecture notes. It's my handwriting note, right? So every class, I'm going to write down. So what, uh, so you know, the materials of the class, right? And uh, I like this way in particular because you know, in this kind of like mathematical dance and the mathematical oriented class. So it's very hard for you to follow if I you know just use slides. We have tried that before, so the out you know the outcome is not very very good. I th I think I need you know we're just going to write every down in detail slowly, for you to observe absorb all the material, okay? And uh, in the beginning of every lecture, so we're going to have the review slides, okay? That is to review what we cover in the previous lecture. Okay, and uh, during the semester, I will ask you to fill several surveys, right? For example, let's say the first survey, so you're going to fill, is like, you know, we're gonna vote our decision for the interactive uh, video session, interactive uh, discussion session, right? And uh, so I'm going to ask you for other things, and uh, you know, in the survey, like your feedback about, uh, you know, what you learn in this class, right? My teaching approach. Right, and also other stuff, you know, that can help to improve, you know, this lecture and also can improve your teaching experience. Okay, and, uh, and also um, you may note that uh, during this class, you know, we may, we may need to make changes. Okay, so in the end, you can see uh, you know the syllabus. You know you can see the tentative course outline are here. So those are basically all the material that we're going to cover now, right? But if we're going to change anything, right? For example, if some some of you are extremely interested in some content that will not be covered in this class, so we can vote on that. If you say yes, so I can cover those. Or you know sometimes you know we have to cut some of the, some of the material, right? So 
we we're, we're also going to vote for that, right? And uh, another example is, right, so now the tentative exam, the midterm date is October 22nd, right? If we're going to change it, we are also going to vote on that, okay? So, yeah, and it, so we're going, going to follow the majority of the people, right? If the majority of the people say yes, then we're going to uh, follow them in this class, okay? So here is the, you know, I'm sure you know your responsibility and also my responsibility, right? So in one word, so our goal is to learn the material very well. So as you may see now, so this course is extremely fundamental, right? It's a fundamental for many, many other interesting and exciting topics, right? So let's, let's <clears throat> let, let all of us try our best to you know, improve your learning experience, okay? And for collaborations, so it is allowed, right? For homeworks and also for labs right so the healthy collaboration are allowed right so you can discuss the material and help each other to understand material better right and uh, and also you can you know you know let other help you to program and debug it's all allowed but you cannot copy others homework you cannot copy others code and of course you cannot copy others exam right it is forbidden okay so so please be careful on that right so in most of the case in most of the time so we find one or two students cheat okay so this is very serious so please do not do that okay so it's in detail here what you can do and what you cannot do, right? For example, let's say for your homework, so if you solve all the problems and there, or some of the problems under the help of others, please put the other's name there, okay? So your grades will not be impact because, because of that, okay? But we just need to be honest, right? So, you know, doing the homework under the help of others is totally fine okay but we have to be honest right okay uh great so yeah and also americans with disability act to support so we support that i think you know there there are some people with disabilities in this class so we will try our best to support you Okay, so let me know if you need any other help. Okay, right, so that's basically pretty much about the syllabus and you can see the tentative course outline here. So the, all the chapters here I put is the chapter from last year's book, the first book. Okay, so as the cor course goes by, I'll put the, the corresponding chapter for both of the books. Okay, you'll see all of them. Okay, so now, uh, let's go back to the the last topic of this class, right? So the course syllabus you can find it, of course, on Canvas, and also you can find this in this link. Okay, so what follow this class, right? As we said, it's a very very fundamental class, right? Is on the top here. Okay, there are many many other classes that you know can that will use this class, right? So uh, there are mainly like these three uh, directions, right? So one direction is the control, and the second direction is the signal processing, right? As I said before, so if you're interested in, you know, the discrete time signal processing, you should take this class, 5030, 5530, instead of this class, right? Our class is very basic and fundamental, okay? And along this line, so we have digital uh, image processing, right? And also we have advanced digital signal processing one two and now uh, we may not have so if i'm not mistaken we may not have this class anymore but you know you know some other faculty may offer this just you know uh, you know pay attention to that and also we have estimation theory 
right? Basically, in estimation theory, so it is like the random signal system, random signal processing, and also similar for random process here, right? In random process, you're going to a lot of, you're going to learn a lot of random signal processing, okay? And the third direction here is the communication system, right? So that is one of my research area as well. And uh, you know, after that, you may learn information theory. And also adaptive signal processing is also adaptive filtering. So this is also one direction for the signal processing. Okay? So along you know, one relatively independent line, so this is a is um, you know it's very very basic fundamental and mathematical so here so we start from <clears throat> probability and the statistics and then we learn random process and later on we may learn information theory okay so information theory is the most fundamental theory uh, about information right it'll tell you what information is how to quantify how to measure information right so this is a basic information a basic theory of all the communication system uh, all the signal processing system and including you know the current 5g 4g communication system and also you know even um, so even other uh, signal processing kind of system and including machine learning and stuff Right, so this is uh, you know what uh, you know high level courses that we're more or less currently offering. So also you know if uh, if you are interested or you are planning to continue your study here for your master or your PhD degree, so here are some advanced topic uh, class here. So we have fundamentals of wireless communication. So that's the highest. Uh, uh, level course on communication and as we said we have the advanced uh, DSP course right and we have applications of fading channel I'm not sure whether this class um, is still offering now maybe not but the following four courses uh, might be offered by myself right so I have taught catching networks before so which is a very hot research area and I have taught fundamentals of cloud systems uh, I think uh, in spring 2019, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a very, very hard class. And I may offer uh, in the future on the distributed and the federated machine learning and also wireless networks. Okay, if you're interested, please just pay attention for that. Okay, so lastly, in the final slides, I would like to give you a very brief overview about my research group, so which is called Computing, Caching, and Communication Groups (CQ), right? So basically, we're studying, you know, a, a system that has the component of computing, caching, or storage, and communications, right? So our research area covers the distributed and the federated machine learning cloud computing system, so content delivery network or caching networks, and also wireless communication and the wireless networks, including the 5G networks, right? Currently, I'm doing, you know, low sensor network design and implementations, and also uh, I'm doing the millimeter wave communication, massive MIMO communication for 5G as well, right? So I have multiple research positions for undergraduate research so if you are interested so please contact me so you know we may find something uh, that is interesting to you and uh, some of the positions are even paid okay so that uh, I guess yeah that I guess conclude uh, today's class right as uh, we said before today is a very you know introductory class right we'll just give you motivations and you know some examples of signal systems and we go through the core syllabus right and uh, from next lecture so we're going to talk you know details of each component of the class okay so please let me know if you have any questions concerns of this class or anything unclear okay so that would be all for today Thanks a lot. Yeah.
See you next time. Bye.